Hey friends, it is time to answer all of the questions that you have voiced about my new duplex purchase. So let's get into it. If y'all didn't know, I recently purchased a second duplex. I bought the home that I live in now, which is a three bed, two bath, three bed, two bath duplex in uh, College Station, Texas at the beginning of 2020. And since then I've been saving up for another home. I've been house hacking this entire time. So I've been living in one side, renting out the other. Of course, over the past couple of years, the property has increased in value, rents have raised, and I am looking forward to getting into my next home so that I can rent out both sides of this original duplex as a passive stream, semi-passive stream of income. Landlording, if you do it right, is never fully passive, but it is worth it. I do have a video on ethical landlording below if you wanna go check that out. I'm also happy to answer any questions about that that you guys may have. But first, let's get into the questions that y'all voiced on my new duplex tour video. I will also link that down below if you would like to go see it. It is a beautiful 3111 duplex and it was about $30,000 more than I spent on the first duplex. It is smaller, it has fewer bedrooms, um, fewer square footage, but it's beautiful. It's in a downtown area and I'm really looking forward to moving in. And right now I'm in the renovating process. It's a lot of fun and a lot of work. So by far and all, the most common question on the tour video was why am I moving? Why am I moving from a lovely larger space into this smaller space? We're losing a bathroom, we're losing a couple hundred square feet. Why not just stay in my current place and have purchased the new duplex and rent out both sides? The answer is threefold. The first is, is that my current unit will make more money for me than the new unit would. Like I said, smaller, fewer bathrooms, etc. And I will be able to essentially get more money to pay on the mortgages by renting out the 3-2 unit that I'm in now and I've been working on for the past several years. Second is I did a 10% down conventional loan, which requires the owner to occupy the property for at least a year. This allowed me to put less down than the 20% that I would have had to if it was just an investment property. And there are also some tax benefits to it. I uh, also third, am just kind of a glutton for punishment. And I don't wanna live anywhere that I wouldn't wanna live myself. So by living in the place, I'm absolutely going to get it up to a really wonderful, lovely level, probably over improve it just a little bit so that Jacob and I will be comfortable. And eventually long-term, it'll um, be better for the property and for how much rent I can get. As for my uh, personal finances, putting down $30,000 on this $260,000 property was a huge amount of the money that I had saved over the past three and a half years looking for the next property. And I'm spending another 30 grand improving the place. We've torn down a wall. I'm uh, redoing, I've completely gutted the bathroom, putting up new fences, which are very necessary and other improvements that need to be made. I'm DIYing as much as I can, but a lot of it had to be contracted out because I don't do electrical, I don't do plumbing and I don't tear down walls. Me sledgehammer, no. I've never been a super high earner and I'm very frugal. So I hope you guys know that if I'm laying out this much money to improve this property, it's because that has to happen. <laughs> Question number two, how much did you put down and how hard was it to get the second loan? So as I said, I put 10% down, which is about 30 grand. And, and it actually wasn't hard at all to get the second loan. The first property is in my name only. Um, and it, I qualified for it just with my day job income here at Texas a and I'm on my lunch break. Second property was exactly the same. We didn't even count any side income towards it. It's just my day job. I buy properties that are not as expensive as they could be. And obviously mortgage companies like to uh, give you as much as you possibly can afford. So my two mortgages together, it's about 1,700 and 2,100 are actually less than uh, a lot of people at my wage level are paying for their primary home. So that plus the rental income that I'm getting, going to be getting off of the first property, I very easily qualified for that. I have a lot of money in savings. It wasn't an issue at all. If you are having a hard time qualifying, 
for a certain amount for a home loan. There are a lot of really good programs out there. I did FHA for my first duplex, which allows you to put as little as 3.5% down. Um, and there are a lot of great incentives and benefits to that program. There are also a few uh, conventional loan programs called like Home Ready, which is also by Fannie, which allows you to have up to two mortgages with 3% down. I didn't use that, I just did conventional, but there are programs out there that offer a lower amount down if you are having a hard time qualifying for whatever reason. There's also, of course, veterans programs, and there are newish conventional loan programs where you can buy up to four unit multifamily homes for much, much less down, which is going to make the house hacking space a little bit more competitive, but is also a great benefit for people who want to get in to house hacking, being a tiny, tiny landlord and being able to generate a little bit of income with your home. Can you talk about how you're able to put less than 20% down on the second home? Does it affect your original mortgage? As I said, because I'm living in it, I was able to get a conventional loan owner occupy and put down less than the 20% that an investment loan would be. Nothing is changing with my original mortgage. I was required to live there for at least one year owner occupying. It's been three and a half. So um, the only thing that will be changing is the insurance because it won't be my primary residence anymore. A little bit of funky things get to be switched because it'll just be insured slightly differently as purely an investment property, but it won't affect my mortgage at all, which is great. So I have 2.5% on that original duplex and the current one is 6.1. Another question I'm so excited for you. This one seems like such a steal. How did you find it? My realtor actually found this one for me. It was listed on the MLS, but it was a little bit funky. And I think it's the reason that not a lot of people saw it or put in offers and why I was able to, once again, negotiate down on a mortgage or down on the property. So it's a 3111 unit. The 31 was built in 2008. The 11 was built in like 2021. And the only photos on the listing were of the 11, which is much more updated and nicer. I don't think that they wanted to show the 31 because there were a lot of people living there. Um, but just looking at it on like Zillow or the MLS, it looks different and weird and not in a great way where you can't really see the potential of the property. It was listed as single family home instead of multiple units. And it was just a little funky. The realtor didn't put it up properly or showcase it as well as it could have been. It was also listed at 280 and I got it down to 260. In the original video, I talked about maybe changing out the cabinet fronts in the kitchen or doing some changes there. And I had somebody question why change anything if the cabinets are in good shape um, or change out anything in the kitchen. Uh, maybe you should consider painting or adding features like drawers, but no need to go to the expense of pulling out and putting in new. What I ended up doing is actually tearing out one of the walls in the kitchen. A bunch of you guys suggested that it was it was huge and it was expensive. It was about $8,000, but it opened up a oversized kitchen to an extremely undersized living room and gave me a lot more options as far as kind of organizing and having that space. I know a lot of people aren't into open concept, but I do think this is an improvement on the property, not only for while I'm living there, but for future tenants too, because you could barely fit a couch in that living room and now it'll feel a lot bigger, even though it's only 900, 950 square feet or so. And I know I lost some cabinets when I took out that wall, but I did also extend the cabinets up to the ceiling and just as part of this process. And I also decided to keep the original door fronts because they were hardwood. Um, I'm not just gonna rip out and throw away things that are perfectly fine, but they were pretty dinged up and damaged and they were just flat plywood. So what I did actually was I added, I got two inch strips cut of thin plywood, and then I glued and stapled those to the fronts to make kind of faux shaker doors. This saved me thousands on this entire project. It's gonna create a completely new look for the kitchen, and I think it's absolutely going to be worth it. I also had to tear out the countertop because it was old for mica. It was falling apart and cut through and water damage and all sorts of stuff. So I am getting some new put in there. It's gonna be super nice, but the kitchen is definitely a huge, huge expense for this. But I think it matters. I think it's gonna make a huge difference. What is a 3232 and a 3111 unit? So I apologize for that. I kind of use shorthand sometimes. Um, when in the real estate space, usually if you hear numbers on numbers, it means bedroom, bathroom. So it's a three bed, 
two bath house or a three one three bedroom one bath house so the old duplex is a three two three two so three bedrooms and two bathrooms on each side and the new duplex is a three one 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 which is three bed one bath on one side one bed one bath on the other next do you manage these yourself or do you hire a property manager i am under the impression that no one is going to take care of your things like you will so i self manage and that one saves me money because I'm not paying a property manager. And two, I am on top of these units. When I talked about living in one side and renting out the other side of my current duplex, a lot of people said like, I wouldn't want my landlord living next door. Do they know? And I also even got a lot of advice from other real estate people saying like, tell them you're the property manager. You just live on site. And I'm like, no, this is my place. I'm going to be upfront about it. Transparency is my thing if you guys have been here for a minute. So all of my tenants have both known that I am the owner and also that I have like a YouTube channel where I talk about real estate and budgeting and stuff like that. It's not something like I advertise or try to get them to subscribe or something, but I am open and honest about that. They're probably going to see me filming at some point, whether it's on my side or in the backyard or something, it's just easier to kind of be open about it. It also allows me to know what's going on in the properties and make sure that the repairs are done properly. So if I can't do the repair myself, I dispatch a handyman or a repair person. I oversee that. I pay the bills myself. So the tenants contact me directly. They just text me, tell me, and I make sure to get things done quickly and correctly. And ideally also, if anything ever breaks, I try to upgrade it. So if the um, shower head breaks, I'm gonna put in a better one. If the um, faucet on the sink breaks, I'm gonna put in one with like the spray nozzle now because I want to upgrade my properties over time, keep them very, very nice and make it a really good place to live that you can be proud of living and therefore take care of it. Next up is a series of Jacob related questions. So let's hit them. First, um, I thought your boyfriend lives with you. Why would you include bought by a single woman on this? You're not single and that's disrespectful to him. Well, first of all, I did buy it <laughs> by myself without any of his money. And two, we are engaged, but we are not married. I am single, both in the purchase of this and in like the definition of unmarried, which is yeah, he didn't pay for any of this, so he doesn't get to get credit. He pays rent. <laughs> and that's not disrespectful toward him. He, that he would tell you the exact same thing. Next question. I guess you and Jacob made the decision that you're okay downsizing your personal space. Just curious why the decision to move from a two bathroom to a one bathroom. Is it so you can live in the space while renovating? Giving up a washroom is huge. So that is actually huge. That's the thing that I am most worried about with this entire situation is going down from two washrooms to one because he keeps his bathroom messy and I do not like anything on the counter. It drives me nuts. So um, yeah, that's gonna be fun. I purchased this property 100% because it was a good addition to my overall portfolio and because the price was right, as in I could get enough money renting it to pay for the mortgage, which is harder to find every single month now. I'm actually hoping not to stay in this place too long, maybe a couple of years and then purchase another home, maybe even just a single family for Jacob and I and the dogs by ourselves because I will absolutely miss separate bathrooms. <laughs> Next question, what does Jacob need an office for? Because he wants an office. <laughs> if you or your partner have an office, what do you need an office for? So we don't have any kids. Um, right now we're in a three bedroom, so we share a bedroom for sleeping. And then I have an office where I do kind of like budget girl stuff and my projects and everything like that. And he has an office where he does that kind of stuff, um, his kind of stuff. I think it's great for adults to have separate spaces, especially if you can afford it and you have the space. This new ho house is also gonna be a three bedroom, so we're gonna have the same divide that we did before. I'll have room for my stuff, he'll have room for his stuff, and we'll share a bedroom. We also both work from home sometimes, though when I do it, it's 100% from the couch. Next question, given that you're engaged, I'm assuming all your assets will now become your and Jacob asset, Jacob's assets once you get married in the near future. Not quite. So there's premarital assets and there's postmarital assets. I'm not opposed to um, eventually having all the houses be in both of our names. But right now, Jacob still has some student loan debt and he is in grad school. So my finances and his finances are 
very different. We are engaged. We'll probably get married not this summer, but next. And we'll probably kind of merge some accounts together. But these properties are kind of like my side business, uh, managing them, purchasing them, everything like that. He doesn't help with the renos unless I really need him to. Um, he has not, he, he's not allowed to paint. He's very bad at it. But I, I paint, I did the shaker fronts. I'm the one that does all the maintenance requests and screening the tenants and dealing with the tenants. That none of that's his deal. Which by the way is 100% fair because he pays me rent, which means he gets to be a tenant. He doesn't have to do the management. If we were to purchase a future house together, we'd probably do more split split, even though I'm a little bit better at like the handyman type stuff. I kind of consider that double dipping. I've seen a lot of kind of couple situations online where like one partner will pay rent to another one, but then they'll also still be involved in helping with like renovations and improvements and stuff like that. And that's double dipping. No, if you're paying rent, you just get to live there like a tenant. Um, he only helps if, you know, I really need him or I ask him as a favor. Next, uh, when you purchase properties, are you putting them in a trust or in your name? Right now, both properties are just under my name. I'm not opposed to doing some sort of incorporation later, but I have not yet. Next is renovation questions. Can you take down the wall between the kitchen and the living room to make it feel larger? Yep, and we did it. And it was expensive, but I don't regret it at all. I think I like it so much better. I'm excited. Honestly, if I, if this were just an investment property, I probably wouldn't have done it. Like I probably just would have saved that eight grand um, and just fixed everything up, made it really nice. And anyone who rented would have seen the tiny living room and decided whether or not they wanted to deal with that. But because I'm living in it, I did want that bigger, more open space. I do think it's better overall, like a better design. And yeah, no regrets. Next question, did I miss something? I thought you were looking for a property with space for the ag wagon. Yeah, unfortunately, I looked for a property with space for the ag wagon. I looked for two years and I couldn't find one. So I did end up selling the wagon. I have a whole video on the numbers on why I decided to sell the wagon. I did make all my money back, but I didn't make any money off of it really, unless you include like the YouTube videos associated. Um, it's, it's really, really sad. I also have a vlog where I cry a lot about it and I, uh, maybe one day I'll have a camper again. I just couldn't find land in this area. And it's mostly because this is a college town. Any land kind of gets bought up really quickly and for high prices to build student condos. Next, can you do a video on house hacking in general or go into detail about how a property would start paying for itself? Absolutely. I have a couple of those kind of down below outlining how I did the house hacking within the first video and I've got some other videos on how I've analyzed properties in the past to see if they would be a good investment. The duplex that I am currently in has been paying for itself for quite a while, um, which is absolutely lovely. Uh, it essentially allows me to live um, with my tenants paying my mortgage for me so that I can save money for the next project and also for improvements. I don't want anyone to get the mis idea that, you know, a rental income, uh, anyone should become a slumlord and you shouldn't fix things and that you shouldn't reinvest into your properties because I've put 30 grand into my duplex in the past three years. So while I haven't had to pay rent or to my own mortgage for most of that time, I am putting money back into the property. I'm improving it. I've had to fix things. There was a huge drainage thing and a kitchen flood. So you have to have those kind of funds available to the side for that and just kind of hope that eventually you'll get into the actual cash flow territory, which is how I will be when I move into the next place. The mortgage is currently 1700 on my current duplex. I have one side rented out for 1450 and Jacob pays $700 in rent to my side. So I actually make about 150 bucks a month on the property, which immediately goes into PITI. So money that will be reinvested back into the property, things, just simple things like uh, maintenance, pest spray, small improvements, that kind of thing. But when I move into the new place and I'm able to rent out both sides for 1400, I'll actually be able to cash flow off of that property several hundred dollars a month, which will uh, kind of help pay for me living in the new place, which will also have some rental income coming in from the small side. So that's kind of how that works. It's a long process. It's not easy or quick money, but over time, 
the mortgage will get paid down, the property will continue cash flowing, I will continue to keep it a lovely, wonderful place to live, and it will be a good secondary income generator for me so that I can not fully depend on my day job income. So we like multiple streams of income. They protect you. Next, you have a habitat restore in your area. It's a good place to check for vanity sinks, bathtubs, etc. And yes, I always shop secondhand and DIY when possible. So I always check those types of places and local stores first. Honestly, you can get cooler stuff and of course support the programs in your community. Unfortunately, my habitat seems to have some pricing issues because I tried to get a couple extra cabinets from there and they wanted like a dollar less than the ones at Home Depot. But yes, most of the time, always secondhand. I always check secondhand first and I DIY and reuse stuff as much as possible for sustainability and for money savings. I also use Facebook Marketplace a lot to find things. I was able to find these absolutely gorgeous Pottery Barn vanity medicine cabinets and they were $75 for the pair, but originally $400 each can save so much by just shopping online. I also went and got a pair of bifold doors for the closet for 20 bucks. I had to drive 40 minutes, but still that saved me like 180 bucks. Almost done. How are you doing this on one income? Congrats, I'm going to cry. So I never want anyone to cry and I 1000% get how frustrating it can be to look at the prices that houses are and how much you're making and just be feel like that dream is so far out of reach, much less being able to like own multifamily property or multiple properties. I am never gonna be one of those people that comes on the internet and says, hey, I got rich doing this and anybody can do it because the frank fact is, is not everybody has the same resources that you do. And it's also why I don't have like a course on how to make it big on YouTube or do a bunch of affiliate marketing or anything like that. I just think it's somewhat disingenuous. And I also try to recognize that everyone's personal finances, opportunities, resources, time, and skills are completely different. Not everyone can become a millionaire with Airbnb, as I learned, <laughs> um, or affiliate marketing or real estate. I am not a get rich quick or an even, even like a get rich channel. I'm more extremely slow, slugging forward, budgeting and making good money decisions over time person, which is not sexy and very hard to sell. I also haven't 100% figured everything out yet. I'm still learning and I try to be as open with you guys as possible on that. And not every venture works. Look at the Ag Wagon. So subscribe if you're down for that quickly. <laughs> So all that said, here's what I've done to be able to afford the new duplex. I currently save over 40% of my income from my day job, which has raised over the past seven years that I've been here. I started at 47 and now I'm at 70. I also have a few side hustles like this channel, like the other side of my property. I had the ag wagon. I have no monthly housing costs, as I mentioned, and that allows me to save the entirety of what I would be paying for housing for the next property. And as my income is raised, I haven't really added a lot to my budget other than just having to increase it slightly with as things have gotten more expensive. Food is killing us all right now. I have emergency funds and other savings that keep me from having to go into debt if things happen, which they absolutely always do. And I know that a lot of this sounds intimidating and hard to accomplish, but I promise you that I started probably worse off, <laughs> if not at the same place that anyone watching this is with a absolute ton of student loan debt. I was making 1600 bucks a month and have just budgeted and made better money decisions as I could over time. It's not something that I was able to like flip a switch and make it happen. And it's not the funnest thing to hear either because it's a long slog. I've been documenting this slog for almost 10 years now. I sincerely hope that this doesn't discourage anyone. I always encourage people to start the same way that I did with a budget, with a plan and with some goals, starting to save for the future, pay down your debt and forming good money habits that you can level up over time. Your path or situation might not look like mine has at all, but I do believe that you can reach any financial goals that you might have over time if you are patient and steadfast in your journey towards them. My big moments were realizing exactly my money situation and kind of figuring out what I could do to start rolling the ball on those, slowly increasing my income, cutting down on the debt. It took me three years to pay off my student loans. And once I was done doing that, I moved that money that I was paying towards the loans, towards my emergency fund, and then to a house fund. 
and now I'm still saving most of that money that I have left over every month. Once I got the house, the original duplex, I was able to save even more because I didn't have to pay as much to live somewhere, which was a huge game changer. A little bit of it is luck, um, negotiating raises, finding other ways to bring in more money. And a lot of it is accepting that things take time. Waiting for the right opportunities, like the properties that I have ended up purchasing has been fairly brutal. I've seen some of my peers in this space buy dozens of properties over the last few years. And I just kind of have to sit and wait for the right opportunity because I'm not as high of an earner. But during the past three and a half years while I've been saving and looking for places, the money that I was saving piled up. And then when the opportunity and the numbers were right, I was able to purchase this new place. I'd like to make it as clear as possible that I am not better or different than anyone. And I recognize how hard it is if I had some things like kids, it would, my money situation would be completely different. If I lived in a higher or lower cost of area, a different health situation where I couldn't go DIY a lot of the stuff or teach myself how to do things, it would be a lot harder. I encourage you to focus on what you can change in the short term and not give up on any of the dreams that you might have long term. I believe that you can get there. And I thank you for asking. I know it's hard. And then the final question, any desire to get a real estate license? It seems like a good fit. So a lot of people who invest in real estate do end up getting their real estate license, mainly so that they can get those fat commission checks kind of from themselves or from the seller if uh, they're purchasing a new place. So you kind of, if you buy a property from someone and the seller pays your commission, then you purchase a house and then get like a check immediately back from the seller. It's like extra money. However, I am still learning the real estate investment area and the space, and I have been able to get a ton of value from working with a local realtor who has been doing this for decades. My realtor, Janet, has uh, been with me through both of these duplex purchases. She has brought me to probably close to 100 properties to look at over the past four or five years, and she and her husband know so much about the space on how to like ask for different things and to negotiate contracts. She has definitely saved me so much more money than I would have had, um, than I would have gotten from kind of negotiating my own deals. And so maybe one day in the far, far future, but in the meantime, I'm enjoying working with someone else who can try to think of things alongside me to benefit me um and that's been worth absolutely every penny also i'm not sure that i need like another job to add to the resume that that doesn't sound like fun to me all right that's all the questions that i have from you guys right now feel free to ask any more below and i am i promise working very hard on the first duplex diaries i've been doing every single weekend at the new house elbow deep in paint and gross and all sorts of stuff, but it's coming along so beautifully and I can't wait for you to see it. Um, so don't forget to subscribe and like if you like normal person wealth building and real estate investing. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.